that, let that, let that um, glory to God, that lighthouse shine out there, Lord, right in the direction we need to go, Lord, and, 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 and showing all those little pitfalls and, and, and stumbling blocks and all those things in front of us. We thank you for it tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 1, the book of Acts, we're above. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. That's just how Jesus did it. He did it. He told you what he did. He tell you what he's going to do, then he did it. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen in them forty days. I, you know, I like the testimonies I was hearing them tonight. Uh, from, from Precious and, um, and Jimmy there. Infallible proofs that God is good. You know what I'm saying? And, and of course, you know, the enemy come on, try to steal that, try to try to water it down, try to put something. But those are, if you, if you will, will allow them to be infallible, you know. I, I was thinking of, I was watching the State of the Union last night, and I was, um, of course, we all saw what happened at the end. I was thinking, I had heard beforehand how they had already fact-checked everything. So everything he was going to say as far as statistics and numbers was going to be right on. They wasn't going to be able to come afterwards and say, well, you know, fact-check, and now that's not. You know, they had already did due diligence, and they did all that. And they did all that. And of course, we saw the speaker do her infamous thing with Jigger. It reminded me of Stephen. He was just telling it how it was. He was just telling how it was. And then the Bible says they were listening, and they were just gnashing at it. They just, they just, they just couldn't, have, they just couldn't hear anything more, you know. <laughs> and um, and um, glory to God. <laughs> anyway, to whom also verse three showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen within forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Uh, what else would Jesus be speaking of? And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye, and that's all of ye, that's all y'all, all of you, all of you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. And when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or, or, or the seasons which the, the Father has put in his own power. In other words, kind of said, that's not your concern. Here's your concern, verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Here's what you should be uh, uh, thinking about, he says. Uh, but ye shall receive power, and that's all ye, uh, after, the, uh, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. Somebody say taken up. Mm -hmm. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And when he was taken up, church, it reminds me of what verse 2 says, where it says, until the day in which he was taken up. After that, Jesus, by the Holy Ghost, is still doing and teaching through his people, through the apostles, through his church today, by the Holy Ghost. That's how he's doing things now. Amen? Acts chapter 1. That's how he's doing things now. Verse 8, he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Church, there is a power that's available to us as believers that we need to, we don't need to neglect it anymore. We don't need to overlook it. We don't need to, to, to trivialize it. We need to understand there's a power available. There is an anointing available. And the source of that power is the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost as, as born-again believers, as spirit-filled believers. If we're not allowing the Holy Ghost to lead us in Romans 8, 14, to empower us, to speak to us, to guide us into all truth, we are, we're not allowed, we're not letting Jesus, verse 2, do what he said, do it the way he said he was going to do it. He said, it says after that, when he, after he was taken up, he through the Holy Ghost. is still doing, verse 1, still teaching. That's how, it, that's how things are getting done. He is the source of that power. He is the, 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 the source of that anointing. It's the Holy Ghost. Are you plugged into the power source? I mean, we, we, when, when, we, 
when, it, when it's Wednesday and we're just like, Ugh, you know, because it's Wednesday. You know, Sunday was you know, a pretty good Sunday. You know, we, we had a good word, this, that, and the other. But, but now Monday and Tuesday and, and this and that and the other thing. And, and so, so, we're plugged into the power. Yeah, it's storming. What did Jesus say in the boat? Why are you fearful? Why are you have such a little faith? It's going to be all right. We just keep on. We're plugged into the source. We're, and, and, and it tells us we're called to go into every man's world, letting our lives bear witness to the power of God. Are we doing that? Are we letting our life bear witness to the power of God? Or, or are they looking at us going, it's a bad week for him. No, or are they saying, man, I know it wasn't, I know Monday wasn't too good for him over there, but dang, it, it don't seem like it's phased him. It don't seem like he's blown out of what he's, he's, hey, yeah, dealt with it. Praise God, I was able to deal with it, and here I go. Amen? But are we, are, are we doing that? Are we letting our lives bear witness to the power of God? I'm talking about the anointing of God on your life. We talk about others seeing the anointing on us. Do you see the anointing on your life? Do you realize, are, are, you, are you aware that there's an anointing you could be walking? And it's not determined by what's going on around you. It's not determined by such and such laying hands on you. It's, it's determined whether or not you want to walk in it or not. If you want to walk in the anointing, you can walk in the anointing. What anointing? Well, Isaiah 10, 27 talks about an anointing that destroys the yoke. Anybody here got bondage and, and yokes trying to trying to, to, to affect their life? Well, there's a, there is an anointing you can walk in that'll destroy that stuff. An anointing that'll heal sick bodies, drive out devils, that'll cause deaf to hear, lame to walk, blind to see, that's capable of restoring relationships, whether it be a broken uh, family, a broken marriage, a broken heart, a broken life. Luke chapter 4, Jesus said it like this. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's what? Somebody say it. He's anointed me to bind up the brokenhearted, to set, set at liberty those who have been captive. He said, he, he gave that whole speech about setting the prisoner free. He said, this day, this is fulfilled in your, right here in your hearing. Man, that goes back to verse 1 of all Jesus began both to do and to teach, which naturally leads me to verse 2 that says, until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he's still doing it through the Holy Ghost with us. Paraphrase. Power that can set the captive, the bound, the addicted, the oppressed, the afflicted. I'm telling you, there is an anointing available today. Holy Ghost power available today. I mean, I'm glad. I'm glad we got um, doctors we can go to. But while you're in the while you're in the while you're in the emergency room, did you lay hands on? In Jesus' name, you're going to be made whole, unashamed, not embarrassed. Whether anybody heard you. Holy Ghost power. Because Jesus, he, he paid the price. He's the one who baptizes with the Holy Ghost and fire. Uh, Jesus died. He was buried. He rose on the third day. Uh, Jesus said, it's expedient for you that I go that the Comforter may come, John 16, 7. Because Jesus said in verse 8, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Glory to God. Power. That's the power source in our life, the Holy Spirit. The power can be in you. It's not of you. The Bible's real clear about that. But it can be in you. As awesome as you may be, you didn't pay the price for this kind of power to be operating in your life. You, you didn't take stripes on your back. You didn't climb Calvary's cruel hill. You didn't descend into hell, come out of hell three days later. Jesus did all that. He was the one, the Bible says, who was born of a virgin, who lived a sinless life, died a selfless death, conquering death, hell, and the grave. He's the one that baptizes with the Holy Ghost and fire. It was him that Acts 10, 38 describes, that says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And because God was with him, now, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 17, 4, 7, excuse me, we have that treasure in these earthen vessels. That, that the excellency, excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. 
It's not our power, per se. We didn't earn it. We don't deserve it. But we, but we can totally operate it. We can totally be filled with it. We can totally be a conduit for which it flows. Glory to God. The promise of a power-filled life, of an anointed life. A, a, a life that points to God as your provider. That points to God as your, your source. That, that, that God has provided an anointing for you and I that bears witness to Jesus Christ. That's, that's the purpose of all this anointing. That's the purpose of, 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 of these signs, wonders, and miracles. Uh, it's the point to Jesus. It's the point to, to the Lord. It shows the world, amen? It shows the world. Glory to God. Anointed like Jesus because of Jesus, with the Holy Ghost, with power. You too can do good. You too can go around and heal those who are oppressed of the devil. His power working through us. Again, not of us, but certainly through us. We have this treasure in earthen vessel. Why? Vessel? Why? Because Jesus gave it to us. We didn't earn it. He gave it to us. You and I, the church. What's that mean? That means we're favored by God. That means we're blessed by God. That means that God has put his big old okay on you. Amen. He, he's empowered you, glory to God. He's called you to be like Jesus. I love that. Was Jesus anointed? Is Jesus still anointed? As he is. Amen. So are we on this earth, 1 John 4, 17. If he's still anointed, as he and he is, then so are we on this earth. The Bible tells us. As he is, so are we. Glory to God. Speaking of Jesus, you know, before Jesus was a born uh, a man, there was 4,000 some odd years of words spoken about Jesus. Prophetic utterance about Jesus. And when the fullness of time had come, Galatians 4.4, 4, he came. In other words, when everything that needed to be said was said, those words became the word. Became flesh, John 1 14. When everything that was said was said, <laughs> when everything that Jesus, I don't want to say, was to become, because he always is, always was, but for, for, for everything that was said, for it to become flesh, okay, when it was said, when it was, <laughs> when everything was said, it became. Maybe today in your life, there's some words that need to be said so they can become flesh in your life. So they can become, they, so they can manifest in you. Like I'm healed. I'm delivered. Maybe your manifestation is just waiting on everything that needs to be said to be said. Some work, some seed. Matthew chapter 4. Remember, the kingdom of God is as a man casts seed. Somebody say word. And to the ground, somebody say heart. Remember, Matthew 4 also tells us that, 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 that you know, the parable of the sower. You know, that, 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 that he sowed seed into the heart. As a man sows seed into the ground and, and rises and goes to bed and, and, and knows not how, but the seed, the earth of itself that causes the seed to spring forth. First, the, first the, the blade, then the ear, then the full uh, uh, kernel on the ear. Amen. Then the, the, in other words, the full manifestation of what the seed was, was meant to produce. So in other words, when everything's said, that may, may, you have a part in saying what needs to be said about you. Amen. Well, why don't we confess the word? He's, he's the high priest of our profession. He's watching over his word to perform it. Amen. Uh, we, we confess, we're saying what, what you need over your, we're saying what needs to be said over our own lives. Amen. That's good seed. We're saying, we're saying what needs to be said so it why? So it can be, so it can manifest. So, uh, you know, God has something to say about you. You know what? You know, you know that's that's God's seed. God, when God, when God, God has a, when God talks about the 
For I know the plans I have concerning you. That's God's seed into your life. If you'll just, if you'll just say what he says. If you just receive what the word of God. When God says, for I know the plans I have concerning you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not harm you. Plans to give you a hope in the future, Jeremiah 29, 11. In other words, God's got something to say about you. And if you'll say what God says about you. Cause them plans to manifest. You'll cause them plans to come to pass. That seed will grow, and it'll end up the blade, the ear, the full corn, the full manifestation of what uh, of what the of what the planted seed was meant to produce. I mean, a lot of people need to just simply change their view of how God sees them, so they can fulfill His plan. We already got, I don't know where, oh, I know where they get it from, I guess, but, you know, it's not coming from the Bible. The, the, you know, so many have that, that God's not, you know, the Bible says he's for you, right there. God's for me. That's what I should be confessing. The Bible says that God, that God, that God, that, that so, he so loves, God so loves. That's what I should say. Nothing different. I'm not going to say anything different. I'm just going to take God's word by faith. Amen. Remember, I think it was Sunday school class I was talking to Sunday. It felt like the Lord spoke to me uh, a, a little bit about faith. You know, faith was always, you know, in the beginning, the Bible says that God spoke and, and, and man did what God said. Amen. And then he told there was that tree. Remember that garden with that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And, and God said, don't eat from that tree. In other words, God, God did God, it wasn't God. It wasn't like you needed to even go get any knowledge of good. You didn't even go need to get any uh, knowledge of evil. You just needed to obey God. That's called faith. Amen. He didn't. He didn't say, "Hey, I, you know, I, I know I hear a bunch of stuff," but it, he didn't. He said he didn't want you to eat from that period. He wanted you just to take him at his word. That's how it was always been meant. That's how. And, and when man took him at his word, God had it all laid out: perfect, blessed, this, that, and the other, fruitful, dominion, everything. But when man decided that, that he was going to, whether it be knowledge of good or evil, have some input into it. You know, there's some things that, that, that we think that aren't necessarily evil. You know what I'm saying? But we set ourselves up, you know, say something that God says. Well, God don't want me to sit there and, and, and be the evaluator of whether I should do that or not. Just do that. You know, I'm not sitting here reasoning it out, running it through my through my knowledge bank. Yes, Lord, I believe I agree with you. No, I by faith just do what the Lord says. You know, I trust Him completely. He didn't want me to even have that kind of knowledge to to run through my head and to consider. What did it, was it? Our daily Bible reading today that talked about uh, the simplicity of the gospel. Uh, uh, lest that Paul said, "Lest I fear that that you've been deceived, just like Eve was deceived, just through subtleness." Just through when she saw that it was a tree, good to make one wise. Hmm. No, God just wants us to follow him in faith. He just wants us to obey him. And that's all man had to do. He didn't have to, he didn't have to know how it worked, why it worked, whether it was he just God just said it. And that was it. And everything was before him. Everything. But when it comes to uh, what God what God says about us, why don't we just say what God says about us? How many people, well, I'm just not worthy. Who told you you weren't worthy? Who told you that? That comes from the accuser. It comes from the accuser. Don't listen to what he has to say. That's bad seed. You don't want to plant that. You don't want, you don't want the, the, a harvest of, the, of, of bad seed. Blade, uh, ear, uh, full, full. Uh, you know, you don't want a harvest of, of that coming up in your life. Jesus made you worthy. The Bible says you were chosen and appointed by Christ to bear His fruit. John fifteen ten. You are a son of God. God is spiritually your father. You're born. Except John chapter three. Except a man be born again, or literally born from above, he won't see the kingdom of God. You've been redeemed and forgiven of all your sin. The debt against you has been canceled, Colossians 1.14. You have been made righteous, 2 uh, Corinthians 5.21. You are worthy. The devil is a liar. 
Amen. That means his words are bad seed. You don't want that growing. You don't want to produce. You don't want a harvest of that. You know, the Bible says, oh, we could really go on a sidetrack about how much the Bible talks about lying. Why? Because it's bad seed. And you're going to get a bad harvest. From what? From lying. It's going to grow. It's going to produce. And you're not going to like it. Why? Well, because number one, it comes from the father of lies. Who was a liar, a murderer from the beginning. That's the source of that bad seed. But yet we may not. I guess it's according to what, you know, kind of, kind of like what's according to what you're lying about, I guess, and all that. What? Who told you that? You didn't get that from here? Yeah. Go ahead. You sow deception. You don't read deception. You don't be deceived. People are going to deceive you. That's going to happen. Would you sow The Bible talks about deceiving being deceived. Exactly what you're saying. Those who are deceiving are deceived themselves. And y'all know what we say. What is just so the, the hard life, the, the, the hard lesson of deception, the, 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 the by definition, when you're deceived, you don't know it. <laughs> by definition, you don't have a clue that you are, or else Rusty, you wouldn't be. And so when you try to explain something to someone who is deceived in an area, they just cannot, they can't, they can't get it, wrap their mind around it at all, at all, because by definition, they have no idea that they're deceived about the issue. God knows who you are. God knows your name because you're important to him. Don't allow anyone, not even yourself, to call, to, 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 to call you by something other than what God says. You're not a loser, you're blessed. Amen. You're not rejected, you're accepted. Make sure people call you by the names the Lord calls you. Don't let what somebody else says take root in your heart and, and bear fruit. Don't let somebody else call you. Don't let somebody else. You're never going to achieve nothing. You ain't talking about me. You're going to be just like this, that, and the other. And, and, you know, some derogatory comment. Not me. Well, no, nobody's, nobody's making any money. Not me. I mean, I am. Everybody's getting it. No, I'm not getting it. What does the Bible call you? I mean, what does the Father call you, beloved? Redeemed. Saint. People try to limit you. By, by, by words, by putting their name on you. Convict. Addict. Divorce. Cheater. Just all those things that maybe maybe someone could say you did that, but don't stay that. Just because you did something, that doesn't make that doesn't mean that you're perpetually that's who you are. You can change. If any man be in Christ, he should change. Or what God calls you, what God calls you takes the limits off of you. You're somebody God wants to use for his purposes. You're somebody God wants to anoint. He has anointed you to accomplish kingdom purposes. You can do what may seem impossible to you because of God's anointing on you. I like Psalms 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen? In other words, you can look at that several ways. In other words, if you'll delight yourself in the Lord, he'll place his desires in your heart. They'll, 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 be, they'll become your desires. You can delight yourself in the Lord, Amen. And as you as you delight as you as this stuff delights you, He'll say, "Oh, you can have it." <laughs> what What am I doing when I'm reading when I'm reading uh, when I'm reading that um, I'm blessed and not cursed? Ooh, I'm delighting myself. You know what God says? He'll give me that. You can have that. Uh, I, I find a promise and I just delight myself in it, and I, and I say, "I'm ahead and I, I'm I'm healed by His stripes. I'm healed." You know, you know what? You know, what does Psalm say? Give me the desires of my heart. If I, if I just, if I want it, if I delight myself in it, if I, woo, if I take it, he says, you can have it. I give it to you. Yes, sir. And when you take it, he does a woo too. Yes, he does. 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 Why? 
Why, why don't we want to accept that? Why don't we want to? I mean, folk are quick to accept that God wants to swallow them in a big black swan. Because they did one wrong thing. They did a lot of wrong things. I'll say this, and, and I'll be accused of giving license to sin. <laughs> people act like my God let me just let me say it God is so good the blood is so wonderful the blood of Jesus is so wonderful that when it washes you you wash but there is a thought that well if you do one thing then you're dirty well I may be looking at it too simple, but the way I look at it is, so what you're saying is as powerful as the blood is, if I did one dumb thing, it's more powerful because it eliminated what the blood did in my life. It's not subtle. It's not subtle. None of that can overcome the blood. That's the, the, and why? Because God is so good. He did it like that. The Bible says things like, God was in the world not imputing their sins against them. The world just needs, you know, so somebody in here needs to tell the world, God's not mad at you no more. Sin's been paid for if you can receive it. Somebody needs to tell them. Now, now you're, you know, just, you know, if, well, you're just saying this, that, and the other. Yeah, is that what this is Paul? You're just saying, well, I'm going to do more. I didn't say nothing like that. I'm just saying God's so good. God is, God is so, God has so blessed you that glory to God that, that yeah, that, that what I'm saying is true. Now, that, that, <laughs> Make sure, get your heart right about it. That ain't a license to go do. If, if that's the way you, if you feel like, oh, that I mean, I can just do anything after that. Something's wrong with your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord. Glory to God. It's Samson. I'm not forfeiting the anointing. For time's sake, I'm not going to go all the way into that. But we're most of us are familiar with the story of Samson. You know, we're going to. We're going to desire the anointing. We're not, we're not going to want to forfeit the anointing or, or disregard it. Samson, the Bible says, was a judge in, uh, in, uh, in Israel, a uh, ruler. He was, he, had, he was greatly favored by, uh, he was greatly feared by Israel's inter, enemies. He, was, he, he reigned for 20 years. He, the, the spirit of the, this of the Old Testament, the anointing would come on him. The spirit of the Lord would come upon him, supernatural strength, and nothing could withstand him. But Samson forfeited the anointing. Samson was led by his flesh. Everything was always about Samson, his wants, his desires. The Bible talks about how Samson loved women, enter one Delilah, and pick from hell. You know what I'm saying? He loved her, or at least he lusted after her something. He wanted her, you know, all bad. And if we were to read that story over in Judges 16, we'd find out that it doesn't sound like she loved him too much. Because every time she would talk about how much she loved him and wound to sleep, some some bad guys come jumping out of their closet to, to, you know, to take him over. And eventually, eventually he gave in and told her all the secrets. And we all know the story about, you know, about if he got his hair cut and how, how he would lose that anointing. He told her, and she did, and he did. He lost. He forfeited that anointing. I was thinking, you know, one of the saddest verses in the Bible was, there's a 16, 22 where it says that Samson rose up like before and knew not the spirit of the Lord was upon him. I want to encourage you tonight. I wish you would have read it, but we were at that time to read 20 verses. But Judges 16, read that 4 through 20, 1, 22. I wrote this down. How tragic is it for one to forfeit the anointing of God in their life? How much more so to forfeit it? I don't even realize that you did it. I don't even realize that you did it. Or maybe worse, to know it, not want to do it. Know what you're doing. To know what you're doing is costing you to walk. And when I say walk, I'm not talking about causing you to go to hell now, you know, I'm saying I'm talking about causing you not to be able to walk in the anointing that God wants you to walk in. Somebody make you mad? Did you let yourself be offended? When did you cool off for the things of the Lord? Have you just got so busy with everything else in life? 
Have you deserted? I just some thoughts I thought that. Have you deserted your devotional time? Have you got too busy to pray, too busy to read your Bible? There's always a reason why you're going in. Is it there? Is it supposed to be? I know Jesus promised that he would never leave you or forsake you. And he won't. But have you disconnected from that, from that source, that flood that's supposed to be operating in your life? And I know I said you, but you know, I check my own self. I, I've been in places where you know, it's just like I feel, just felt like you're just going through the motion. And I don't like that. You're saying the right thing. You're, you're, you're doing the right thing, but your heart not in it. You know what I'm saying? Because you, because you, there's so many reasons, so many different reasons that we do things like that. I don't like that. There's no power there. There's no light there. I know how it's like to not have any anointing operating in it, and I don't like it. I believe there's a, a number of people who have forfeited the anointing, and they're still going through the motions and keeping up appearances, putting on a good show, still trying to look the part. What do you mean? I mean, you can still shout when it's time to shout if you know when it's supposed to be shouting. You can still clap when it's time to clap if you know when you're supposed to, to clap. You can be doing all that in your life falling apart, and your heart not in it. Your heart straightened from the Lord. We once were on fire, and, 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 and but that, I mean, you once walked in the anointing, you once. You need to ask yourself, I guess, I, I guess we just say it like that. How, how did this happen? How did I get this way? When, when, did I, when, did, when did I start just going through the motions? When did church become dull to me, the things of God? When did prayer become a duty, a responsibility versus a privilege? Uh, you, we need to answer those kind of questions if we find ourselves in that place because we want the anointing operating in our lives. I, I, don't, I don't want to go down those kind of paths anymore in my life. I want to be plugged in. I want to be led. I want to, you know, that's why we, we need to be paying attention to that word, Amen. There is an enemy, and he's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, and so when the Bible says things like 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, don't quench the Holy Ghost. In other words, don't, don't, don't extinguish it in your life. Don't suppress it. Don't put the fire out of God in your life. Don't ignore his direction. Don't ignore his correction. Listen for his guidance, Romans 8, 14. When the Bible says in Galatians 5, 16, walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In other words, let the Holy Spirit guide you. Amen? Amen? Let him guide you. He wants to. You don't have to be like Samson, controlled by the flesh. I mean, Romans 8 tells us if you, those who mind the flesh will walk after the flesh, but those who mind the spirit. In other words, if you think about fleshly things all the time, you're going to end up, you're going to end up doing fleshly things. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, what? So is he. But if you'll think spiritual things, guess what? You'll, you'll operate, you'll walk in the spirit. But it's a choice. It's a choice. Glory to God. Jesus said, Acts 1 8, he said, but when you shall receive power. That's what I want to walk in. That's what I want to transfer. That's what I want my, my children, all my children, to walk in in their lives. Whether they're still living at home, whether they're, whether they have their own families. I want my children to all walk in the anointing. I want, I want, I want. You know, all of them to have the, the favor of God operating in their life. And they all can. We all can. It's not like there's so much of it and only someone can get in on it. It's whosoever will. The question is, will you? Will I? You say amen. Yeah. There is power available tonight. Tonight. The whosoever will. Tonight, you can make a quality decision. Whether you're here today, whether you're living, watching my internet, tonight you can make a quality decision to, to allow the power of the Holy Ghost, the, the, the Lord, to have His way in your life. But will you? Father, it's my prayer tonight that your word, that your word won't fall on hard hearts or deaf ears, Lord God, so that it will accomplish that which you seem to do. Father, I thank you tonight, Lord God, you're watching over your word, Lord God. Your ear is not uh, so it's closed, it's not closed off to us, Lord God. Your, your arm's not shortened, Lord God. You're more than able tonight, whether here or wherever else uh, we may be. We thank you for that tonight, in Jesus' name. Amen.